Good evening and welcome to The Face of Art, the show that brings local artists out from behind the campus and into the light. Each week, we feature a new artist and discuss their journey, their passions, and their challenges. Our guest this evening is photographer Daniel Sutherland. Dan has lived and photographed in Nantucket for 30 years. He has a long-standing relationship with the Nantucket Conservation Foundation, providing stunning landscape images. His work has been collected across the United States and in Europe. Dan is a long-standing member of the Artists Association of Nantucket, and most importantly, Dan is one of my favorite photographers on the island. Join me in welcoming Dan Sutherland. Hi, Dan. How are you? You got me? Hey, kid. How's it going? <laughs> it's going great. Thanks, thanks. For, uh, thanks for being on the show tonight. Thank you for the kudos, uh, and thanks for having me on. I really appreciate it. I really appreciate oh, sure, it. sure, sure. Um, yeah, I consider, actually consider you to be one of the top two photographers on the island. <laughs> oh, thanks. Thank yeah. I'm talking, <laughs> to, the, I'm talking to the other one, right? <laughs> um, so I didn't realize you've been here 30 years. Um, have, you been, have you been a photographer for that 30 years? Um, yeah, I mean, you know, as, as you know, a, avocation and, and, and vocation. Um, I mean, wait, my wife and I bought property here in 91. I mean, I summered here all my life. I'm a summer brat. And, um, uh, my wife and I bought land in 91 and then built a house a couple of years later. And, you know, we raised our boys here, you know, and I was working, you know, you know, it's Nantucket, you gotta wear a bunch of hats and, you know, I was, you know, doing caretaking and painting and whatever. And, but never, losing the camera, you know, always photograph, you know, up early before work photographing and, and, uh, very really familiar with that routine. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. You know, so I never let it die, you know, really, you know, push, pushing on it, uh, you know, um, from the get go, but yeah, no, I started off pretty young and my interest in it was, um, you know, goes way back. So, yeah. um, uh, Hey, you mentioned a quote earlier when we were speaking, Barry Lopez. Is that oh yeah. Yeah. Um, and it also, your your I just noticed your camera's bouncing a little bit. Maybe you're right. on the table. That's just me being fidgety on the sense. Okay, that's cool. I just want, <laughs> didn't want to get too crazy. Um, I love I love to hear this quote. This is all right. So I want to read the quote because um, you know I live into these things. You know, it's like I um, you know I find the words and then they resonate and and I definitely like you know it 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 kind of guides me forward. So this is a quote from. Um, Arctic Dreams by Barry Lopez. He's a fantastic writer, a very good naturalist writer, just brilliant. Um, and uh, and I've been hanging with this quote for, I don't know, 15, 20 years. So here we go. Um, Whatever evaluation we finally make of a stretch of land, however, no matter how profound or accurate, we will find it inadequate. The land retains an identity all its own still deeper and more, more subtle than we can know. Our obligation toward it then becomes simple to approach with an uncalculating mind, with an attitude of regard, to try to sense the range and variety of its expression, its weather and colors and animal, animals, to intend from the beginning to preserve some of the mystery and integrity within it as a kind of wisdom to be experienced, not questioned, and to be alert for its openings for that moment when something reveals itself within the mundane. Wow. So you that's have, it. You that's what I live into, that. man. I live into those words all the time. Yeah. I, I love it. Please send it to me. I'd like to read, read yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. Oh, you'd think I'd have it ma memorized by now. <laughs> you know, well, as I was reading it, I'm like, this is lame. 15 years and you're still reading it. You know, I, mean, I still have to read it. So they, 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 I'm like, that's that's my mind right there. It's 80, 80, you know. Um, can you tell us a little bit about your work with the Nantucket you know, Conservation Foundation, um, with their mission, and then how you fit into that? Yeah, I mean, I, I'm sure everybody's familiar with their mission. They're, you know, they're, you know, since the early '60s of of preserving, uh, you know, as much of the island as possible. You know, um, and I don't know if I can speak to their mission so much as you know, my, you know, I approached Jim Lentowski, the the executive director. Jeez, you know early 90s, mid 90s, and just said, hey, you know, I'd love to forge a relationship with you guys. And just, you know, I'm out there shooting. And, you know, why don't you guys uh, 
you know, avail, you know, just you're welcome to have, you know, anything in my library. So we've done, you know, I did, I designed, you know, early on, I was designing, um, you know, their annual report covers and putting content inside it and, and, um, uh, you know, their, their trail maps and informational, uh, you know, folders and, you know, little, you know, informational, you know, trifold things that they have around, you know, um, uh, website. Um, and then we've done a couple projects and, you know, I don't know if you remember, if people remember that the, uh, uh, Ralph Lauren used to close in the winter and they would do, a um, they would highlight a nonprofit in the window for the winter. And I think it was 2007, they did the, um, they did the conservation foundation. So we did a, we did a, you know, sort of a, a, a big installation in that window. I mean, I was making prints that were like five foot by seven foot, which they still have at the office. They can be seen at the offices. I'm sure you can welcome to go look at them if you want, but um, you know, we did this big installation there. So, you know, it's stuff like that. Um, you know, um, I mean, that was, that was where I first noticed your work when I first, I got to the island in 2009. So mm -hmm. I, I made that, those mm -hmm. brochures up and I said, well, here's, here's Well, that's why it's a great, that's why it's a great relationship because, yeah. you know, you're just, you know, there's a level of visibility. People come up to me all the time. They're like, I see your work in the annual reports. I, you know, I you know, really appreciate it, blah, 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 you know, and, um, you know, um, it's, it's a, it's a great relationship. So, um. Well, like I said before, you know, I think they don't utilize me enough. I mean, I, I'll give them more, you know, they can, you know, like what, whatever they want, you know. They, they sure, can sure. Have it, so. Um, so here's a big question. Where, where are you going to be showing your work this summer? I know you, um, in the past you've done the farmers and artisans market in town. Is that, do you have any idea if they're going to be doing that this year? I, they are, I think they are. I, I uh, actually late, dropped my up application off today, and I was talking to Posey Constable, who's the new director there. Um, they're not having it this week. Um, I assume that means they're going to try to do it next week. And we're trying to figure out, well, you know, how we want it to be for, like, for myself. Like, I don't know what they're going to have in place there to, you know, make sure that people are you know, separated properly. And I don't necessarily, you know, a lot of it, a lot of that market is so touchy feely, you know, it's like, you know, people are going through stuff and touching this and doing that. And, and uh, you know, so it may have to take on a different tone and, you know, we're just trying to figure it out. You know, do I put saw horses in front of my table to keep people, you know, six feet out from it? Um, you want to be per you want to get personal with these people. And it's different. Yeah. And I mean, that's part of, that's the big reason why that works for us is because it's, you know, it's very like I'm not there selling. I'm there connecting. That's what I'm doing there. I go there and I just connect to people. You know, and and that's what it's all about. And you know, you're now you've got the mask. You know, and now you're telling people like stay, you know, stay six feet away from my table. It kind of ruins the mood. Um, but, so between that and then I, you know, I have appointments here at the studio. You know, I bring you know we have client on my conference table here, and you know we spread out the portfolio. I have people here. Um, so, you know, I do a lot of, I do a lot of self-representing um, and, you know, I've got enough traction at this point where, you know, people seek me out. There's people that have been looking at my work for years and they're finally ready to pull the trigger and I get an email and, you know, I mean, I've got a delivery to Eastern Long Island later, you know, in a couple of weeks and, um, you know, people, you know, this is just stuff, you know, at this point just, you know, shows up, you know, it's like, you know, uh, it could probably be a little, you know, I could be a little more aggressive in the winter and maybe expanding my markets. Um, I had an interior designer in Florida, you know, sort of cold calling me out of the blue one Feb a couple of Februarys ago, and we put a big piece in Pompano Beach, and he's like, if you want to move to Florida, your stuff would do great down here. And you don't even have to move down there. I mean, if I could just develop those contacts, it'd be another market. Now I have to be watch it. I don't want to be too busy. Kid, <laughs> you know what I mean? It's like I don't want to. I don't want to. You know, I, I like kind of like my life where I, where it's at. I don't want to get too busy. Right. Um, you had a, a fairly serious bout with the Lyme disease. I, I, I was always curious. Was that was as a result of photographing in the in the wilds of Nantucket? You know, I, I, I you know I'd love to say that, and sure it is. But but the but the times that I really know about and the first one the first one that gave me babesiosis and limes concurrently lucky me um, what my I think my cat brought it in 
you know so and then the other you know the other time i think i don't know what i was doing mountain biking or something but um but yeah no it, there was sort of uh one of those events it was sort of like you know this was the mid to late 90s it's like sort of before you know your life is there's a, it's a marker it's like before limes and after limes you know i just think it just threw my immune system into a tailspin i still struggle you know i still struggle with fatigue and i you know i had to do a lot of dietary changes i was very very proactive which is what i learned that was the blessing is just being really proactive and and uh um you know yeah. self-advocating you know so, did, right. Did it affect your work at all? I mean, did you spend more time? Yeah. Home? Yeah. I was, I was flat on my back. I was like sort of like out of commission for like three years. I was like really in bad shape, you know, like this wasn't immediately like after the early nineties, there's sort of this slow decline. And by the mid to mid 70, 2000, or not like 2006, 2007, things started really coming off the rails. And uh, that's when I really had to dial. I started eating raw, juicing. I had to get quit wheat and, you know, now I'm like a vegetarian, I don't drink, you know, it's like, you know, and those things made a difference, a huge difference. So that was like the silver lining, but yeah, it did have an effect. You know, it, it really took a big chunk out of my life. And I, and I thought, oh my God, is this, you know, is this it? I've hit middle age, you know, and like, that's it, I'm, you know. But I, you know, thank. What's that? Now we're gonna feel better again, or right? Yeah, 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 exactly. It's just you know, but thank God for the internet, and I know I just really was proactive and and just self advocated for myself, and and it made all the difference, you know. So I made some really great changes that that really helps. Um, this might be a little personal, but your meditation practice was that did that come from that that period of time as well? Uh, I have to say that may have been part of it, you know, that, that, you know, that was sort of a long time coming, you know, uh, not too personal. I think it's, it's a really important part of who I am right now. Um, okay. and I, so what does that, what does that look like? What can you tell us about? That? Yeah. Well, what I'm going to tell you and is that after the, <laughs> I have to talk about things that were sort of before and after the 2016 election, after the 2016 election, I was like, how, what is the most politically active thing that I can do? And, and I really asked the question and I just came up with the answer that it is a self-examination. Like that really like is the most proactive thing I can do. So, and I was not a stranger to the technique of Vipassana meditation, which is, you know, it's, you know, it's one of the, it's a, it's a technique that doesn't, it doesn't offend my intellect. There's no ism involved. You're not, you don't have to convert to anything. It's just a technique for right. self-observation. And here are the instructions and you're not to take these at face value follow the instructions and you either confirm for yourself that you know there's validity in this or not so you know and that's that's where i'm at and you know i mean i basically spent the last three years learning how to sit for an hour um <clears throat> which, I, which i do you know I, I meditate two hours a day you know and i and it and it's taken this long for me to really be get established in the practice um and you know so i'm like kit i'm slowly becoming a monk that's, that's <laughs> like, i literally if you had like two years two two three years ago i was like i said i'm i'm, I'm never gonna quit me i love me i love me you know and and you know i love my glass you know, i love a glass of wine too and i you know i never would have guessed but it just just gets in the way of the practice and the practice became more important you know, so, and we'll, we'll see how the, um, I'm interested to see how it affects my photography. You know, my photography, as you know, photography is very meditative and very, you know, calming. And that's definitely part of my character, but sure. I'm, in I'm interested to go going forward, you know, how it's going to, how it's going to affect it. So we'll see this experiment. Yeah. Hey, I'm going to bring up some of your images before I forget to do that. <laughs> oh yeah. Okay. So. For anybody out there watching, here's some installations which are good. And these are a little washed out, unfortunately, but you can go to my website and <clears throat> the installation pictures that should be on the website, they're not. That's actually something I have to do is put some of these installation photos on the website. That's a that's a 58 by 44 inch wide print. That's a that's a 58 by 44 inch wide print as well. So I've seen, I photograph a lot of houses. Well, first it was for real estate. And now it's for the decorators and uh, designers. Um, mm -hmm. and I'm, I'm constantly seeing your work in these homes. Which oh, is nice. That's definitely part of our business model is, is you know, where we forge relationships with interior designers as well. Um, and, 
Dan and I are friendly, friendly competition. What's that? Yeah, yeah. No, I mean, they, friendly, friendly so this one, this one's interesting. This is, this is on an art lift. The, this is a seven foot by nine foot print on fabric. It's a dye sublimation print on fabric. There's a, there's a, um, there's an 80 inch TV under there. I, I've been in this house. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So you, you like turn the TV on and the whole thing like rides up the wall and then the TV reveals under there. It's pretty awesome. It's such a great idea because like photographing these homes with these giant black boxes on the wall when they're when they're turned off is just miserable. So I know. Don't don't get me started. Don't get me started. You've got this gorgeous interior you paid tens of thousands of dollars for, and then you've got this huge black rectangle. And what is the point? I mean that's yeah. yeah. So that was a, that was another dye sub on fabric. That's a, an apartment in in the north or no south end in Boston. So sixty by forty five inch, minimalist. Show them my studio when it was fresh and new and clean, and uh, not, dirty. Man, not, not dirty. <laughs> yeah. So I, so I'm sitting I'm sitting at this conference table, so facing the wall. So you're looking what behind happened? it. What's that? I said, what happened? This looks amazing. I know. What happened? I don't know. You know, entropy, second law of thermodynamics. Um, but yeah, that's it. So. Okay. Sorry. I'm sorry about the screen share. Have a nah, nah, it's fine. Looks good. I wanted to just scroll through these. It's killing me. Let's try this again. Oh, you can't can't figure out how to do the slideshow? Once, right. once you do the screen select, it, it won't let you click behind it, you know what I mean? Oh, I see. Yeah, oh, yeah, it blocks you. Can't you just use the uh, left-right button on your... <laughs> That's what I'm trying to do. Oh, you can't do it, no. No, it's, it's weird. This is this mask that selects a portion of your screen, mm -hmm. but it, it blocks you from physically touching the images with your with your cursor or your mouse, so... No, I can just take mine on the studio. <laughs> um, one of the things I read in your bio was um, with your oceanscapes, do you find them both in inspirational and challenging? So I was just curious what the challenging piece was. It's uncooperative. <laughs> I guess I know that. <laughs> like, you know, it, you know uh, this, is, this is the thing where, um, actually, I just, actually, having said that, I didn't want to take anything in my artist statement out of context. Um, which I probably just did, sorry. No, 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 that was fine. So um, anyway, um, the, you know, the thing is Nantucket's a beautiful place, but what I, what I, um, what I um, um, hunt for are like exceptional moments. So this, the, the one that's on screen now is a view I shoot hundreds of times. I go there all the time. I shoot it in different lights, different lights. You know, it's like, I don't know if you're familiar with the Curacao, the artist, but he was always photo, he was always painting like the same scene, same scene, same scene. Um, you know, and that, I think that's a great way to study things because you're seeing it in a different light. It's so changeable, you know, and that's the thing. And, and well, you know, everything matters in this photo. You know, the way the waves are hitting the beach and, you know, the, the clouds, and it's just so uncooperative most of the time, you know? <laughs> It just that damn bird, that damn bird that's down there. Right? <laughs> I know. Well, I, you know, in, somewhere in my in my writing, I reserve the right to clone those birds out. Like I, like I'm not well, a judge. That's, well, that brings up an interesting question because if this were my photo, I would be very tempted to take out the cell towers. I mean, that's. Uh, yeah, I mean, I may or may not. Like I, like I, I do in one of my statements in my in my printed you know info packet. I I do say that I reserve the right that i'm not a journalist and even though i'm you know definitely in the representational realm um you know and i try to be representational i also well, as you can see now i can, can, can get abstract and then i do you know try to be you know find that balance between abstraction and and representation and yeah, sort well, of well, exploit well. that area you know in a, in a way that's like not obvious you know so um you know, I get a lot of people, some of the seascapes, it's so subtle, like I'm moving the camera during exposure a little and very subtly and people are like, what is going on? Why does that look a little different? You know, it's, like, it, it's hard to put your finger on. And that's where I want to be, you know, so. Sure. Yeah, I don't remember saying, God, these are so washed out. Oh, unless it's just my monitor. <laughs> I'm sorry. No, no, whatever. <laughs> yeah, it's great on my monitor. 
It does it? Maybe it is. Maybe it's. It monitor. looks good on your monitor? Okay. All right. So there, there's, I mean, a, there's a lesson for any viewers out there, you know. Super punchy. Yeah. But monitors, the monitor representation can be. I just need all the viewers to be sitting here with me so they can see. Yeah. God knows, God knows what they're looking at. <laughs> I know. Who knows? You know, my everyone's monitors are so different. So, but there, there it is. This is another spot. This is Cascada Pond. I just photo, you know, especially in the fall, just hammer away at that location again and again and again, you know, and, and uh, so changeable, you know, season by season, moment by moment, you know, it, it, it's so changeable. Um, so anyway, you know, curated moments, you know, that, that was the quote I was looking for. That that's somewhere in my buried in my statement somewhere is that these curated moments you know, that I literally can spend years pursuing, um, you know, to kind of answer your question, like, why, you know, why is it, you know, the, cha the challenge of it, you know? Um, and that's, you know, that's part of the fun and I've learned to accept the failures, you know? I mean, you just, a lot of times you go out and you just don't get it, you know? And that's fine. You know, it's nice to be out there, you know, in the winter here on the beach, you know, sometimes, you know, I, I'll, I'll sit on the South shore for hours you know especially if something's happening you know if it's shows potential that's it's actually a problem i'll like rush out of the house i'll be back in half an hour you know i don't bring any food don't bring any water you know four hours later i'm out there starving to death you know so <laughs> I, gotta, I, gotta, I always have to remind myself like you get up at four you get you know you, you get out there and then it's disappointing right i mean whatever the sky is whatever is disappointing then you have to just remind yourself like it's still a magnificent beautiful maybe it's that photo that you were looking for that day right right you, you got to remind yourself where you're sitting and how magical it is just to be there well that that's actually leads into a good point because you know it's sort of like the zen beginner's mind you know because it's like i go out with a certain expectation of what i want and it could be offering something else that's totally valid but i'm not recognizing it which is a big theme for me is recognition and like, what does that mean? You know, like to recognize something and recognize what's happening and what is the bias that you're bringing, you know, that might be preventing you from seeing something like seeing it in a different way or deeper way or another way or whatever. So, um, but once again, those are, you know, those are themes, ideas that I definitely live into, you know, and that's definitely part of my internal dialogue when I'm out there photographing it's like yeah this wasn't what i expected but is it something else you know did, am i missing something so um you know and there's that desire to just want to really dig and maybe get a little bit below the surface and you know is it what you know it you know yes it's representational it's grounded in that but you know can we dig a little into the abstract a little you know and, and maybe perhaps go a little deeper so um you know that's something i pursue earnestly you know I have to say so. Um, a little more. Let's geek out a little bit more with the tech with the tech talk. Um, yeah. you're, shooting, you're shooting medium format, a Hasselblad. Yeah, medium format, digital. Yeah, six six um, megapixel. In addition, uh, to, in addition to the larger file size, is there other benefits to that format? Yeah. Um, uh, why well, I don't want to get too geeky. <laughs> this is the one when, when I told you like to, to like feel free to redirect. <laughs> now would be the moment. Okay, you just be like. If you know, like, you give me if I start getting too deep into this, you just take me right on out. Um, but no, it's a 60 megapixel, and it's not just about megapixels. A medium format is, you know, it's you know, whatever the sensor size is, you know, smaller than a credit card. Uh, four to three ratio is the native ratio, um, and it's not just pixel size. The the lenses are obviously tack sharp, but really where the thing the thing sings is in the subtlety of the tonal gradations. So it's just very good at picking up subtle tonal gradations and it really changed my print statements, you know, because you, you just, you don't need to yell with your print statement. You can just be really subtle. And so that's really big part of the process is, is my approach to Photoshop, the restraint that I show there. And also, you know, um, you know, just trying not to defeat the photo by being too heavy handed, you know, and, um, you know, I shot medium, medium and, and large format film, um, uh, you know, so I, you know, was used to, you know, working with a lot of information. Um, but, you know, especially with the seascapes, um, 
the nimbleness that's required. You know, the, some, the conditions are sometimes brutal. You know, it's Nantucket. You know, the wind's howling at 30 miles an hour. The truck's rocking. I like to do everything on a tripod, but occasionally you just can't. You know, and you're hand-holding through a little crack in the window and salt spray everywhere. You know, and it's like, yeah, try that with a 4 by 5 view camera. It's not going to happen, you know, so... It changed everything for me, the whole the whole medium format digital. And I knew it would back in the day, like when I got my first Canon 10D and it was, you know, the horrible, noisy little thing. But I but I knew at a certain point it was gonna mature to, you know, where you could get, you know, single shot captures of of substantial file size. And you know, it's like that um, you know, the image of the the seven foot by nine foot print on fabric that we did in that house that you showed earlier. You should see it up close. It looks great. You know, it's amazing. Seven foot by nine foot's big. You know, so I did, I did see it up close. <laughs> you did. Oh, you you've been in that house. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. I'm gonna I'm gonna shift here. Um, mm -hmm. So recently, I noticed that you're. This is probably another can of worms I'm opening here, but mm -hmm. I do like. I love hearing you talk. Um, recently, uh, your I noticed your social media shift uh, shifted to racial inequality and Black Lives Matter. Movement. Right. What was, the, what was the catalyst for making that decision? Yeah, so uh, I'm glad you brought that up because as I think as artists, we kind of have a responsibility to ad address those things. And, and I, I think I said somewhere, I don't know who, but I always resisted that um, because, you know, in some ways you're preaching to the choir or belly aching to the choir. And I didn't want it to be, you know, sort of like Facebook-y where everybody's kind of complaining about this or that. And, and I wanted my page to sort of be an oasis, you know, and really not clutter up the message. Just, you know, it's a, it's a landing place to see my photography and chill out and, you know, and enjoy that. Um, but, you know, it's just, it was, it's just, you can't, you can't ignore it. You know, the, the, the Black Lives Matter thing really hit me hard. And this ties in with my meditation practice too, because for me, what was required was internal reflection. Um, and that's what the training with Vipassana is, you're, that's what you're training for, you know, is, is to observe these things, observe, you know, the, the, you know, the humility of it in yourself. Like, like that's where the first work has to happen is in, inside yourself. Um, and, and, you know, and, you know, it's not necessarily my humility or my, uh, you know, sorrow. It's just sorrow. It's just humility. It's not your humility, my humility. It's just humility. It's just, you know. Uh, yeah. Um, and, and so it needed to be addressed. And, you know, and I just, you know, wanted to share and how I'm dealing with it. Because I think that, I, you know, you see a lot of people telling other people what lane they're supposed to be in. And you know what I mean? And it's kind of like, well, you know, you just need to be in your lane. And I, I just wanted to share what lane I was in. And hopefully that resonated with people. It's interesting how, you know, with the, with the pandemic kind of stripped things down to sort of this bare minimum. And, and that's what popped up, you know, was this racism thing. You know what I mean? I don't think it's any mistake, you know? Yeah. You know, so so I just felt a need to to address that, and and like I said, I I I don't think I'm going to dwell on it too much. I'm just going to try to be as proactive as I can, and you know, not have it be a passing moment, and try to be more activist about it. Um, um, but but I think I, I thought for me the the message was really important to to share that you know for me it's about internal work first. Like I got to view it in myself and acknowledge it in myself and. You know, I'm not going to be the guy running around. Well, I'm not racist. I have, you know, I, you know that kind of nonsense. It's just like, no, it's systemic. We, you know, we all inhabit part of that, and I think the shame of it is shared, and we just need to, you know, just view that sure. internally. So um, it's interesting. You know, I thought, wow, you know, if I was in New York, I probably would have been out there. You know, you know, like I just, I, you know, I probably would have been out there shooting. I would have been going out to photograph like I, I don't think I could have resisted and I was so incensed by what was happening doing the, the protests yeah 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 I've seen sense. I've seen well, that's the other the other the other thing too I think is really important is that it's so it's so easy to ally with the with the um you know the victims or the perceived victims but to me and you know with the you know the the Vipassana practice and you know a Buddhist practice although Vipassana Sort of the um, anyway, I don't want to get into that, but you know the 
you know, it's, 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 you know, it's also compassion for the guy that's, you know, spraying the tear gas right into somebody's face, you know, like, how much is that person suffering to get to that point where they could do that to another human being? You know what I mean? You know, and this is, I put this quote on my page, you know, was it, it was at the, in Tibet when the Chinese were torturing and killing the Buddhist monks, their biggest fear was that they would lose their compassion for the Chinese. Like that's what their biggest fear was. Yeah. Like, are you kidding me? <laughs> you know? I mean, that's, that's intense, you know? I mean, talk about hard work. Wow, that's hard work. So anyway, uh, enough about that. Move, move, move us along. Right. Dear, dear leader, my captain, move me along. We're already at 6.30, this is amazing. Um, so we're living in a time where, where a lot of people are calling them, you're gonna love this question, it's probably as much as I do. Um, we're living in a time where a lot of people are calling themselves photographers mm -hmm. uh, simply because they have an expensive camera or because they're getting likes on Instagram. Um, so I'm just curious how you how you see the state of photography. I mean, you just separate yourself from that? With uh, no, I mean, I pay attention. I, I'm fascinated. I, I think that um, I follow a lot of photographers. Um, God, I wish I had saved this quote. Somebody said it really well, and they talked about the... Um, you know that on Instagram, there's really good images, but they are sort of un um, what's the right word? You know, they're all they're all so s similar in their sort of perfectness. You know what I mean? Like there, there's no like there's a sort of a I don't know how to explain it. Anyway, I think it's fascinating. I think there's some good photography on there. I think, you know, there's, you know, I follow these guys, the German roamers, you know, there's like this group, they call themselves the German roamers. And they're hitting these peaks at these gorgeous, I mean, they're gorgeous photographs. They're really beautiful. But, you know, in some ways they're becoming rote, you know? Um, you know, the, the, well, well, the Instagram. personal exp expression. What's that? Uh, who else are you following on Instagram? Oh, geez, um, man. I mean... <laughs> Well, I want to, I want to, let me just stay on topic before I get into specifics. Um, but I think in general, you know, everybody's got a camera in their pocket. I think it's a good thing. I like that people are recording everything. Um, I think there's a certain amount of oversharing. I think there's a, there's a destructive narcissism that's going on, which is a little annoying. And I'm hoping people can realize and get away from, it. I don't think it's helpful. Um, but at the same time, you know, people are, you know, recording events you know, there's much more transparency in the world. Um, and I applaud all of that. Um, uh, so that's my take on it. I'm, I'm kind of, I'm kind of for it. We're, we're image saturated, you know, and I'm guilty as anyone. I'm, I'm on Instagram too much, you know, um, but so are we getting into influences now? What's that? Are we getting into influences? <laughs> like what what's who's influencing me who are my influences <laughs> I'm just curious. Uh, I, I, I always have this this conversation with with friends with like who who i choose to follow and maybe i'm not following them because oh okay you know i, I mean i i when i entered onto instagram i said i'm looking for inspiration that was it's different than facebook for me right but, you know i want to i want to turn on that feed and get inspired to go out and shoot so yeah, Paul Nicklin, you know, the National Geographic photographer, Paul Nicklin, you follow him, Paul yeah. Nicklin. Yeah, you know, people like that. Um, Very inspired. Um, you know, and I, people are just posting pictures of the lattes. I just don't follow and I would get in trouble with, with friends over that. I'm like, I don't know what you want to tell you. <laughs> right. <laughs> um, hey, I, hey, yeah, I've got, well, I've got a question from a viewer about one of your, or about your, um, Oceanscapes. You got a question? What? Uh, from one of the one of the viewers, uh, huh? Jeff Jeff Kroll was curious. He says your oceanscapes almost have like a slight blurry quality to them, very right. painfully. Mm -hmm. And he's just wondering what's the inspiration for that cool technique. Okay. Um, Probably a good example is the one over your shoulder, your left shoulder too. You guys yeah, yeah, that's a good example. That's a that's a forty. So is, that, is there a little, a little bit of motion blur? Yeah, 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 yeah. So I'm I'm you know working on the I'm working on the tripod, um, and then moving the camera slightly. 
you know, during exposure. And there's a real, there's an experimentation place in there where, you know, it can be too much. Um, and then you start to sort of obliterate the scene and it sort of becomes not what it is anymore. And I don't want to be there. I want it to be a seascape. I want it to, you know, I want it to be right on that edge. So, you know, there's a fine line between too much and not enough. And it's just constant experimentation. So, but I have to say, you know, one of my big influences is Gerhard, the painter, Gerhard Richter, which is, you know, you know, his streak paintings are fantastic. I mean, I don't know if, if you don't know who Gerhard Richter is, yeah. look him up. It's literally like, if you follow his work, it's like you're following 10 different painters, you know, all the different, um, you know, iterations that he's had in his career. He's just an amazing painter. He's a big inspiration for me. I'm likely to be inspired by painters, you know, as much as photographers, you know, for sure. So. Cool. Hey, um, we are running out of time. Um, oh. so Dan, I know. Right? <laughs> I'll, ha I'll have you back on, I promise. All right. So you can, you can follow Dan on uh, Instagram, Daniel Nine Sutherland. Is that correct? The number nine? Yep. I deleted my Facebook page. You should too. Um, so, <laughs> <laughs> um, and then uh, Dan's website is daniel sutherlandcom That's it. Right. Well, I'll try to put that in the closing credits as well. <clears throat> um, so I am going to say goodbye and thank you very much for your time. Yeah, thanks for having me on. I really appreciate it, Kit. I I think it's great what you're doing, and it, I love this format. It's really informal and. You know, I think, you know, it's easy to have a sort of uh, have this one on one conversation and people are sort of voyeurist, voyeuristically like just watching in, you know, if we were doing this in front of a crowd, I'd be a mess. <laughs> <laughs> I to not, who's viewing it, right? it would not be pretty. So, uh, well, thank you again. And always fun catching up and I'll uh, see you around the island. All right. Sounds good. Okay, let's get together soon. Take care. All right. Bye bye. Well, thank you all for tuning in. Uh, join us next week as we head back to Costa Rica. Uh, a huge thank you to my friends at NCTV, Channel 18. Their behind-the-scenes efforts make, makes this programming possible. And thank you to, uh, to Jane, who is my art advisor. Uh, I will see you all next week. And